Now then YouTube, I'm the Tough Man and welcome back to episode 26 now of Sky Factory. I do apologise as well guys if uh, it doesn't sound as if I'm doing any of your suggestions or anything like that. I literally, I'm going to put episode 23 out today and I'm recording episode 26 right now. So it, I'm a little bit ahead of you guys, which is, what I, you know, which is why if you've made any comments or any suggestions on the last few videos, I haven't looked at them or I haven't got them yet. So... Guys, today I'm going to be working on wireless transmission of power. Now a whole load of things is going to go into this and a whole load of things that I need anyway going forward. So a magma crucible is the first thing. So from, uh, the, the wireless power that I've chosen to go with is of course uh, the uh, energy tesseracts from thermal expansion. So I'm going to need a magma crucible. Now I went ahead and got all the stuff uh, together to be able to make this. Um, I'm going to want to go sleep as well actually. Um, ew. Have I left it on hard? I think I have, haven't I? Yes. I'm going to have to turn that down, guys, for the purposes of the video so I don't get as much lag as what I usually do. <clears throat> so, sleep, and then get up in the morning. I'm going to have to rejig some things around. Namely, the power system and how I'm going to do this, because I'm, I, I'm going to want a whole load of, uh, uh, of machines um, in today's episode. So, I've got them coming off here. In fact, I don't think I need to. I can just add them off the side of here. Yes, possibly can. It does mean, however, that I'm going to want to do that. Right, okay, let's get some slabs. Oh, slabs. <laughs> and, of course, the hardened energy conduits. Now, um, I, I, I do not want to go and automate any of this process just yet. Let me go ahead and just grab all this stuff away from there, so I can just do it when I have when I feel like it. That's going to go ahead and put some power into there. I'm going to want to add some of that into there. Good. So we've got some some more. I'm going to want some more energy conduits actually, just to fill that line up there, because I'm going to need a few things today. Energy conduits. Then put you into there. I'm going to want hardened ones. 12, I'll do. And then let's add them onto the ends of here. That's brilliant. This system really needs to be moved um, because it's right in the way of everything at the moment. But I'll do that in a bit. So, guys, ender pearls is what we're going to need to do. I'm going to want to get, well, I think it's about 16 ender pearls. I'm going to want what's called enderium ingots. I'm going to need to smelt up these ender pearls into resonant ender, as you can see on the side there. Let me go ahead and grab eight more, actually. And put them in. Um, because I need tesseract stuff. So I want the f just the empty frame at the moment will do quite nicely. I'm going to want fused quartz or hardened glass from, uh, uh, from thermal expansion. So fused quartz, I have the stuff to be able to do the fused quartz, um, but I also have the stuff to be able to do the hardened glass. So I'm going to want an induction smelter. I'm going to need an induction smelter anyway, so it just makes sense to make an induction smelter. Let's go ahead and grab one of these. Uh, so I want a bucket, I want one of them. Now what's annoying is it doesn't pick up the bloody glass, so I end up having to make the damn thing myself in the first place. Um, there we go, that's that. Induction smelter. Got two invar. I'm sure I've got a spare one of them. Go kicking around anyway. Yes, I have. Good stuff. Induction smelter. Let's pop you down there. And again, let's turn all of these off. I don't want any automatic inputs or outputs or anything like that until I say I want some. So there we are. Good stuff. Um, yes, tesseract. The frame, tesseract frame. So, hardened glass, we're going to need pulverized obsidian and pulverized lead, or, I think we can do it, no, that's it, we can do it with a lead ingot instead, which is good for me. So, eight pulverized obsidian, I'm going to need to make some obsidian first and foremost, so why don't I go ahead and do that, get eight pulverized obsidian, get some, uh, get enough um, hardened glass to be able to make the tesseract frame, and uh, we'll get into how to make the enderium ingots in just a second. Well, I didn't actually realise you got four pieces of pulverised obsidian from one obsidian. So I went ahead and made 16 obsidian, and I only need, uh, well, I don't need that much obsidian. So, <laughs> at least we got some spare. At least we have some spare stuff. Right, we need lead. 
lead ingots. And we don't have a great deal of these, so we've got to really be careful with what we're doing here. Um, right, okay, the induction smelter. It's now full. Let's pop some stuff into here. 16. Of that into there, that should be enough. Oh, it was eight for one, wasn't it? So I only needed two, really. There we go. Uh, I only needed four hardened glass for this one. There we go. Good stuff. So let's pop all this back into here and have a look at how we make the Enderium ingots. Because we've got the hardened glass, we've got a diamond. The Enderium ingots, then, is another induction smelter recipe. Now, as you can see, we need Enderium blend. To do this, we're going to need a bucket of resonant ender, three pulverized tin, and one pulverized shiny metal. I'm hoping that we have shiny metal. We do. We do. So, how much was it again? God, my memory is terrible. Just the one, it makes four. And we only need four to make the one. But, guys, we need two Tesseracts to function. So we're going to need to make more hardened glass anyway. Um, I'll do that much. Screw it. I'll do that much. It'll be fine. Uh, which means I'm going to want to put in some more obsidian. Pulverized obsidian. Um, three of them. I want to get some more of them. I want more lead. A couple of pieces of lead. Along with eight of these. That'll do one. And then of course... Oops. The obsidian that I have already in here. There we go. And that will do two. Which will get me two tesseract frames. Which is exactly what I need. Uh, we need also to get pulverize the tin. Don't forget we need to pulverize some tin. Um, we have a little bit more tin than what we do with the other ones. So, three, six. Should we go with 12? Why not? We'll go with 12. What's the harm? And, um, yeah, I think we can then go ahead and try to make the resonant ender, which means we need a bucket. And I hope... Can I get this out? If I switch this around... Can I get this out? Oh no, I can't, can I? I've, what I've got to do... Oh, we're going to have to tech up this furnace. Because what we're going to have to do is a liquid transposer. I'm just thinking about it. Wait, what's it called? Fluid? Transposer? Fluid transposer, there it is. We're going to need one of these to actually uh, run off that magma crucible. So let's go ahead and make one of these. I'll go ahead and make one of these really quickly, guys. You've sat and watched me for too long get all this stuff together. So I will be back when uh, I'm at a stage where I can craft the Enderian blend and the Tesseract frames. Okay, I have enough stuff. I've got the diamond, I've got the hardened glass. Now to make the Enderium blend, of which I showed you guys. Now I've gone ahead, I made the fluid transposer, I put it right next to the crucible. Uh, not this side, but this side. I just went ahead and moved that induction smelter that way a little bit. It did mean that I've lost a little bit of RF, but it only holds 48,000 anyway, so it really isn't that much. So, to toggle, we want to fill a bucket, okay? We want to uh, output this liquid this side. So there we go. Look, we're outputting this liquid this side. We want to input on this side. And there is our resonant ender, guys. Brilliant. That's going to go ahead and fill up. We want to fill a bucket's worth of resonant ender. And then we can go ahead and make our um, stuff. So, uh, enderium blend is what we're after. And I did definitely put the tin in here. Oh, did I? I did not definitely put the tin anywhere near here. So there is four. We need more. So let's fill that up. Brilliant. We've got some more resonant ender. Pop that there. And there is another four. And that's uh, pretty much all we need. We need to then smelt that up, I believe, in a furnace. To get it. Do we? Oh, no, we don't. We don't at all. What am I doing? We need to, guys, in the induction smelt, we need to put it in with pyrothium dust to get two enderium ingots. How do we make pyrothium dust? Well, we need blaze powder, redstone, sulfur, and coal powder. So, hmm, coal powder's not going to be too hard. Oh, 
God damn you, with any eye. We need four, I believe. So we'll just pulverize this coal up. Um, oh, where's it gone? Pyrothium dust. Good, good. We need sulfur. Now, where the heck do we get that from? If we grind up netherrack, we've got a possibility of getting it through that. Oh, if we pulverize coal. There we go. We've got one, sil one sulfur through that. Um, I'm going to put a good deal of that through, I think. A good deal of it through. And what, what, what else was it? It was something that we haven't got. Blaze powder. Now, we do have some blaze powder. I'm pretty sure we managed to get some, but... Oh, man, yes. We've got enough. Brilliant. So, the sulfur, pulverized coal, and what else was it? Redstone. I hope it's like a... Yes. Good stuff. Good stuff. Let's put all of this stuff in here, and, uh, and then we can come back once we've got some more sulfur. We need some more sulfur to be able to do this. So, pyrothium dust... Is what we're looking for. We need more of this. We need at least four, I think. And we'll leave that like that. So what we can do now is put our pyrothium dust in there with our enderium blend. And let that smelt up and get us those enderium ingots. In fact, have we got enough now with four? Because it needs two to make two. Yes, I think we've actually got enough pyrothium dust from here, guys. We can actually go ahead and make our tesseract frames. Now, we still need resonant ender, so I'm probably going to want to fill some more stuff in with that. Because what we can do, we can get rid of that now. Let's put this on either side of there. That, with the diamond in the middle. And that will get us one tesseract frame. I will go ahead and wait for this uh, to fill up as well. And that will get me the second tesseract frame. We need to fill these with resonant ender for them to actually work. So there we go. We've got two Tesseract frames. Oh man, we are doing some good stuff here, guys, today. We need to fill this Tesseract frame full. We need to put the frame inside the fluid transposer with some resonant ender. It needs 1,000 millibuckets to fill just the one. So, oh, we've got 2,000. Fantastic. Got enough. We've got literally just enough to fill this resonant ender. It's going to take a while, so I'm going to cut recording here and I will see you guys when it's full. And here we are, guys. Two full Tesseract frames. Now, we're also going to need to make Tesseracts themselves. We need bronze and silver around the Tesseract frame. We don't have bronze just yet. Or at least I don't think we have. Bronze. How do we make you bronze? Is it tinkers? Oh, dear me. We haven't even started with any type of tinker at all. Wow. Really? To make a tesseract, we have to do this. Tinker's alloy ingot are bronze from Tinker's construct. There is no other way around it. It is literally, this is it. We need to go into doing an entire different system. Unless we can make bronze nuggets somehow. No. Oh, tinker's alloy. Tinker's alloy blend. Ah, okay. No, fair enough. We need three copper powder, one pulverized tin, or the other way around, you know, like three copper thing is. So, that's not too bad. We can do this. And tin, we need two of them. There we go. Some more sulfur, coal powder there. Alright, so I will go ahead and pulverize all this stuff up. In fact, shall I do it on camera? Shall I really do it on camera? It's not going to take long. No, you know what? I'll cut it. And there we are. Tinker's Alloy Blend. Fantastic stuff. So, I was wondering, surely there was a way to, of doing that. So let's put that through there. We need some bronze. We need some silver as well, uh, which we should... Have we even... Have we, we should have silver. Yeah, we do have silver. That's good. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Eight of them and eight of these guys. Once this is finished, guys, we are pretty much laughing about this. I'm telling you. Where's my... Where's my thingies gone? Did I put them in here? I could, may well have done. Tesseracts. There we are. So let's go ahead and make these. One tesseract, two tesseracts, and there we go. Wireless power. Wireless power, guys. So, what I wanted to do is take this from here 
like this. Now all of this system is running off that like it should be doing and it's keeping up quite nicely. Uh, put one that one of that there and put the Tesseract here. We're going to go over here, put a Tesseract over here. In fact, shall I put it in front of it like this? Can I output? Or does it simply work? I don't think I can output. But I can go ahead and get myself an energy conduit and then, uh, you know, output it straight into the uh, the thing. Energy conduits. Good stuff. Let's pop over here. Grab this like this. Uh, probably want to put it there. I don't want to get rid of these torches, you see, because it, it lights everything up. So, that is... I'm going to do this. I, I can't remember how to do this. <laughs> I can't. It's been ages since I've even made Tesseracts. Never mind done this. So, power. Device inactive. Number one. Set frequency. We're going to name this power. No. We're going to name this pink power. There we go. Uh, save the frequency. Pink power. Brilliant. Hopefully this is going to work. And I'm not going to like a total, total idiot. Because this is nearly out, look. This is very nearly out. Now oh, that's power in. Good. Um, pink power. Set the frequency to that. Now is it actually sending power? I want to receive power over here. Configuration. Receive only. Blocked the item mode. Receive only. Energy... Receive only. So fluid mode, I, I need to block that as well. Okay, we need to go... Oh my god. Jesus, things have certainly changed since last. We need to go ahead, block that, block that, and we need to send only the energy mode. And fingers crossed, it's now working. Please tell me it's working. And I'm not... It's not... It, is it working? Yes! Transmit power wirelessly, guys! Clipboard! Tick it off. We're done with that stuff. Three different fuel powers. Uh, well, well, we'll get to that. Because we've got coal. We could just build a nice coal generator and have it automatically going into there. So we've never got lava, pink, uh, pink power, and coal. So, possibly. Possibly a point. Automate something with a turtle. We can go ahead and do that very, very soon. Um, automated bacon farm. Really? We can do that. We can do that as well. Nice, easy bacon farm. Just do exactly what we've done down there with the autonomous activator with a sheep, but do it with um, better, with pigs instead. So there we are, guys. This is filling up quite nicely. Filling up quite nicely. Power's being generated, and I'm quite happy about that, guys. So, okay. I think that pretty much covers what I wanted to do in today's episode, which was to transmit power wirelessly. We've done that. It's all a bloody mess behind here, but still. Um, all right, uh... Give me one second, guys. I'll take a quick break here. Um, I think we're around about 20 minute mark or somewhere around there. So, um, right, I'll figure out what we're going to do next. Well, welcome back, guys. And it's very, very nearly the end of this episode. But I was just like to show you this of what I started on working on here. Now, what I'm planning to do is have some transition planes on the top of here to make a sugarcane farm um, and farm them with these transition planes. Something I've never done before, and I really don't know how it's going to turn out, guys. I don't even, I'm not familiar with how they work, but apparently, uh, if something grows in front of them, they will mine whatever's in front of them. So, yeah, I mean, it makes sense to use these as a, you know, a, a way of automating the sugarcane farm. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and make ourselves four transition planes. Uh, I'm not sure how like how hard they are to make. That's not too bad. Oops. Four of these. One, two, three, four. Shove that in the furnace. No, that's the pulverizer. There we go. Right, I'm going to get myself together four transition planes, guys, and uh, I'll be back. And there we are. We're all hooked up down the bottom now uh, just to make the transition planes. And there we are, guys. We have four ME transition planes now. I think it's time that we can go ahead and add these to the system. And we've got to... They apparently face towards me. There we are with a big black uh, front on there. So let's put all these together. And there we are. They are on the system. Let's go and have a look just to double check, make sure that they definitely are here. 
Uh, four transition planes, there we go. 12.4 megajoules per tick being used, and it's still keeping up with itself, which is absolutely fantastic. This actually looks like it's going down, guys. <sighs> Ooh. We may start to have problems. This does look like it's going down rather than up. Yeah, it's going up a little bit, but it is still going down. Uh, so, guys, um, we might have to add some more in there over there. Who knows? Right, let's go. Let's test this by grabbing some sugar cane. Oops. Sugar cane. And sticking it on top of one of these. Now, I don't know if it automatically farms them and puts them in, you know, because they are connected. But let's have a look. Uh, actually, a good way to test this would be to take all of the sugar cane out. Eight sugar cane. Right, there's no sugar cane left in the system whatsoever now. There you go. That's how it works, apparently. It grows up and gets farmed. I don't know if it goes straight in the system, so let's go and double check to see if it does go straight into the system by typing in sugarcane, and there you go, 16 sugarcanes are in there guys. We have ourselves a nice little sugarcane farm, and another episode where we can take off yet another thing, farm with a transition plane. We've done that one guys. So, I think that'll do for today's episode, we've uh, very nearly well, we're rattling through the challenges now, absolutely rattling through some of them. So, until next time, guys, I've been the Tough Man. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, stay safe.